All right, so in today's lab, we actually went through the various types of parameters and hyperparameters that can be used to control the models, exploring exactly how they played off of each other and developing a means to begin to understanding how to change them and how to manipulate them. It ended with a complete demonstration of how to turn ChatGPT4 into Claude-like output using a combination of the parameters. We were working with uh, the playground and in, in looking in completion mode. We have all the parameters in here. I'll just kind of walk through the parameters really quickly and we'll just uh, take a take a temperature of the room, so to speak. Okay, so temperature is essentially controlling how much you want it to pick the le the less likely parameter or the, the least likely next token. So the lower the temperature, the more likely it will pick the most likely token. Did that make sense? Okay, I hope that made sense. At any rate, you turn the temperature down, you get you get the, the most likely outcome, which basically means you get to go to the pastels. So yeah. we will go to our ever famous describe a rose bed for Let's see, I'm going, to, I'm going to do something. From the point of view, first person, POV, of a steampunk scientist. Okay. There we go. That, that'll be fun. Okay. So with the default parameters being what they are, it's like I press my face down to the ground, leaning closer to the rose bed. On closer examination, the blooms reveal themselves to be a steampunk style. <laughs> steampunk style. Uh, okay, so, and it's got some nice dark reds. It's got a little bit of light greens and light oranges. If you if you are slightly colorblind, uh, my apologies. Now, something that's interesting that I, I noticed on the last one is if after you've run this, you select the words, it'll actually tell you how many tokens are present and it will tell you something called the log probability, which is the logistic probability that this thing would actually come out. Our output was 194 tokens. Okay, so that's how you can get your token context. If we turn the temperature down, what do you think will happen? Are we going to get better pros or worse pros? I stand in awe at the sight of the rosebud before me. The metal pipes that run between the flower beds have been intricately and crafted and painted with a bright brass, which complements the brilliant reds and pinks. Right. So, in fact, uh, I'd actually call, I'd actually say this is slightly better prose. Why? Because it's staying more on the expected outcome with regards to the inputs. And I got some uh, like. Uh, like uh, we have light, light orange and dark orange, <clears throat> which is showing that we are probably getting in here. Now, if you want to get to pedantic pros, what we could do is we could turn the temperature all the way down to 0.1. We'll just do this. Okay, so that's... All right, so, so this is 0 0.8, and this is 0 0.1. I stand in awe of the beauty of the rose bed before me. I stand in awe at the sight of the rose bed before me. The vibrant colors of the roses, the metal pipes that run between the flower beds. So from deep reds to pinks, behold, the petals are delicate and soft. So this is where it's very much sticking to the, ro the concept of the roses. I am a steampunk scientist. <clears throat> okay, great. I am fascinated by the intricate machinery that powers the rosebud, the intricate gears and cogs. So whether this is better or worse is actually a personal call, but it's actually kind of worth playing with these things. Temperature is essentially determining whether it's going to pick what it's going to pick with regards to the next token based off the current token sets. So let's, let's try pushing this up to like 1.1. And let's see if that gives us better, better descriptions. Let's see. Steampunk site, majestic site against the sleek and polished metal surroundings, contrasting organs. Okay, so, so let's see here. Uh, as a steampunk scientist, I found myself captivated by the majestic site of a rosebud before me against the backdrop of sleek metal surroundings. So it's still 
giving me the genre name, which a steam, uh, someone in a steampunk world would ever say this was steampunk, right? That's that that's a, that's a given. Um, I'm still getting kind of the same general stuff, but I am. This does actually have a little bit more interesting choices with regards to you know it's it's giving me the shapes of the hedges. So let's do something that I said don't do. Let's play with some of these other settings. So let's just say we want it to stay kind of on point. So we're going to make it a temperature of 0 0.8. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the presence penalty. Now remember, the, the presence penalty works off of the prompt, and the frequency penalty pushes stuff down. So what we can say is we can say, we can give it a presence penalty of one, saying that we want it to go someplace else. And let's let's just see what that does. I walk through the rose garden, admiring the many different colors of roses. I've never seen so many beautiful flowers. He was wearing a white lab coat and a bright smile on his face. Well, at least we lost the steampunk. Now, why do we lose steampunk? Because I have a, an assigned presence penalty of one, which basically says anything that's in your prompt, try not to use it. One of the ways, one of the things you can do is if you want to make sure it's not being too pedantic, is you can you can push up the presence penalty and, and the frequency penalty. Now the frequency penalty is once it's used a token, it'll try, it'll, it'll reduce that token's likelihood if it sees that token in the future. So it's like as it's moving through, it's like, oh, I've seen token 666. Uh, then later on, token 666 comes in and goes, oh, I've, I've already seen token 666, so I'm going to push it down a little bit. But then if it, if it still picks it based off of its random choice, it's got now two token 666. And then it goes, okay, so now the third time, if that comes up again, it pushes it down a little bit more. So every single time the token appears, it pushes it down a little bit more. So that's how you can kind of get it to start steering away from, away from stuff, right? So I stand in the center of my rosebuds, ro ro my rose bits, surrounded by a vibrant riot of colors. The roses have been carefully chosen for their unique properties, appearance and range, bright scarlet, soft hues and mauves, the stems. So this is actually where it's actually talking fairly well in first person. I don't see the word steampunk anywhere into it, but on the other hand, we have a presence penalty of one, so that's kind of eliminating it. Uh, the rose bed stands as testament to my passions. So now... Let's see what happens if we also add in a frequency penalty. Let's just pump that up to one. Now remember, frequency penalty is essentially something that's going to be saying, hey, once you've used something, try not to use it so much again, right? So we're going to push that up just a little bit. As I push my goggles up on my forehead, I squinted to take in the view before me. My steampunk ugh, laboratory is surrounded by a stunning rose bed, lush, Rose beds, lush and colorful blooms of every hue were scattered across the landscape like rubies and velvet. You know that didn't work so well together, at least not for me. I mean, I don't know what you guys think of think of these pros. So top P kind of starts cutting off your options and your choices. Temperature make may says pick the don't pick the most uh, likely, right? So the hotter the temperature, the the <clears throat> more it will go towards something. Um, uh, less less uh, expected. So I think what we need to do here is we need to bring this thing down. So let's let's just bring this down to a five and we'll take the frequency penalty down to a five. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna increase the, uh, the pe presence penalty up to a 1.5. Remember presence penalty only occurs once and it's on the inputs. Frequency penalty is uh, injection. So now I'm just going to say, okay, let's 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 be a little bit more pedantic, as 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 was said earlier, but let's let's just kind of push this around. Now I've got colors of sky. I've got the crunch of gravel. I have the air filled with sweet scents, surrounded by vibrant colors. Uh, and my inventions loom around me. Uh, creations help keep the garden alive and thriving. As I look closer. Uh, every single one is being pushed around. Uh, very much larger puzzle. As I'm reading this, I'm looking at this like, this is, uh, I mean, it's not great prose, but it's actually something that I could use in editing. I could definitely clean that up a little uh, bit. These are stereotypical labs for the Future Fiction Academy. We do these things eight times a week live. 
We also do uh, Write With Me's uh, in Discord so that people can get some body doubles going. Uh, if you if you like what you saw here and you want to stay on the cutting edge of what's going on with regards to uh, author generation and the future of writing fiction, uh, why don't you come and check us out at thefuturefictionacademy.com. Thank you very much. And if you like this, there's probably going to be links to other videos like uh, somewhere over there or there. I don't know where someplace or, or at least in the description below, there should be some stuff. So thank you very, very much. I really appreciate your time and have a fantastic day.